everybody. This is the Life Group lesson for Sunday, August the 6th, 2023. We are in the book of Jeremiah. Today we're in chapter 36, and the lesson is entitled Speaks from verses 19 on. I have my journal here with me today, and I want to share with you about five things that we can take away from today's passage. Before we begin, let me open us up with a word of prayer. Father, as we look at the passage in Jeremiah today, help us to realize that your word is enduring truth. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The first thing we want to see in today's passage is that God's word is to be shared. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 36, verses 19 through 21. Then the official said to Baruch, Go and hide, you and Jeremiah, and let no one know where you are. So they went into the court to the king, having put the scroll in the chamber of Elishema, the secretary, and they reported all the words to the king. Then the king sent Jehudi to get the scroll, and he took it from the chamber of Elishema, the secretary. And Jehudi read it to the king and all the officials who stood beside the king. Here in chapter 36, God had instructed Jeremiah to take a scroll and write on it all the words that I have spoken to you concerning Israel, Judah, and all the nations from the time I first spoke to you during Josiah's reign until today. And Jeremiah obeyed, and he called in his assistant Baruch, and he dictated the words to him. About a year later, Baruch took the scroll to the temple and he read it aloud. When the king's official heard what Baruch did, they had him read the scroll to them. When they heard what it said, they were afraid, and they realized that they had to inform the king. When Baruch told the king's officials that the words on the scroll were from Jeremiah, they asked Baruch and Jeremiah to go and hide. These guys knew that the king would be angry, and they recognized that what was likely to happen to Baruch and Jeremiah when King Jehoiakim discovered what they had done. Now earlier, Jehoiakim had sent men to Egypt to hunt down the prophet Uriah, who had prophesied against Jerusalem, and he had fled for his life. Jehoiakim then had Uriah executed. So, this concern that the king's men had is not unfounded. What we need to notice here is that the words and the actions of the king's official demonstrate that they're sympathetic to Jeremiah and the messages that he has. These officials deposited the scroll in the chamber of Elishema, the scribe, for safekeeping. However, when they went to the king in his courtyard and reported to him about the scroll and its contents, the king sent his servant to go and get it and bring it to him. And Jehudi returned with the scroll, and then he read it to the king. The second thing we want to see in today's passage is that some people will dismiss God's word. Let's look at verses 22 and 23. It was the ninth month, and the king was sitting in the winter house, and there was a fire burning in the fire pit before him. As Jehudi read three or four columns, the king would cut them off with a knife and throw them into the fire into the fire pit until the entire scroll was consumed in the fire that was in the fire pit. Here we see that when the king hears what is being read to him in the scroll, he has contempt for God's word, and this is very evident in his actions. The scribe's knife that's here is used for making and repairing reed pens and for trimming and cutting uh, papyrus rolls in the production of scrolls. So as Jehudi used both hands to unroll it and read the scroll a few columns at a time, Jehoiakim used this knife to cut off the sections and then throw them into the fire. It's possible that Jehoiakim thought that he could destroy the power of the prophecy by burning it. But the king should have remembered and recognized the truth of the words of the prophet Isaiah, who had also written, The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God remains forever. But you can compare Jehoiakim's destruction and his contempt for God's word in contrast to that of his father, Josiah, who was godly, who tore his clothes and called the people to repent when he first heard the word of God from a scroll. Third thing we want to see in today's passage is that God's word is to be honored. Let's look at verses 24 to 26. Yet neither the king nor any of his servants who heard all these words was afraid, nor did they tear their garments, even when Elnathan and Deliah and Jemariah urged the king not to burn the scroll. He would not listen to them. And the king commanded Jerahimel, the king's son, and Sariah, the son of Azrael, and Shelemiah, the son of Abdil, to seize Baruch the secretary and Jeremiah the prophet. But the Lord hid them. Here we see a contrast between Jehoiakim's response to the reading of the scroll containing God's word and his father Josiah reacting to hearing the word of God read from the scroll. It's drawn out in these verses here. 
Tearing clothes was an expression of grief, bereavement, lament, remorse, and humility. And this was Josiah's response when he heard the reading of God's word. Now, there were three men that stood up to the king and they urged him not to burn the scroll. Giving the king's response to the scroll, it's no small thing for these three men to stand against him. And to speak on behalf of the message of the scroll could have resulted in to their executions, just like Uriah the prophet had been executed. This is a lesson for every believer. We can either stand with those in power who defy God and seek to silence his word, or we can stand up and speak out for God's word faithfully and be devoted to God and his word regardless of the personal cost to us. Jehoiakim hardened his heart even more, and he ordered that his son, along with uh, others, find and apprehend Jeremiah and Baruch. Now, it's not known how long Baruch and Jeremiah remained in hiding, but Jehoiakim must have dropped the matter later after some time, given that Jeremiah was able to move about freely later in Jerusalem. God obviously has more for his messenger to do. The fourth thing we want to see in today's passage is that we are to be persistent with God's word. Let's look at verses 27 and 28. Now, after the king had burned the scroll with the words that Baruch wrote at Jeremiah's dictation, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Take another scroll and write on it all the former words that were in the first scroll, which Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, has burned. So the king's act of burning the scroll was an attempt to destroy the word of God. But this was futile because the word of God came to Jeremiah again. Jehoiakim was able to destroy the scroll, but he's unable to prevent God from speaking through his prophet and in the production of another scroll. Jehoiakim was impotent in his attempt to eliminate the power of the prophet or his word. He cannot stop the judgment of God and what God has in store for rebellious people. God instructed Jeremiah here to rewrite the scroll with the original words of the previous scroll as a sign and a witness to God. Judgment against Jerusalem and Judah is coming. Jeremiah took another scroll and he gave it to Baruch and Baruch once again wrote down the words that Jeremiah had dictated. Through Isaiah, God said, my word that comes from my mouth will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I please and will prosper in what I send it to do. Even though the enemies of God will try, no one can silence or destroy God's word. The final thing we want to take away from today's passage is that God's word will endure beyond anything else. Let's conclude with verses 29 to 31. And concerning Jehoiakim, king of Judah, you shall say, Thus says the Lord, You have burned this scroll, saying, Why have you written it that the king of Babylon will certainly come and destroy this land and will cut off from him man and beast? Therefore says the Lord concerning Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, He shall have none to sit on the throne of David, and his dead body shall be cast out to the heat by day and the frost by night. And I will punish him and his offspring and his servants for their iniquity. I will bring upon them and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem and upon the people of Judah all the disaster that I have pronounced against them, but they would not hear. God gives a message to deliver to the king in addition to reproducing the scroll. First, he declares that Jehoiakim burned the scroll and God was saying, I know what you did, and he's implying that he's going to hold the king accountable here. Second, God quotes Jehoiakim when he questions Jeremiah's right to produce a scroll pertaining the words of judgment and prophesying that the king of Babylon would destroy Judah. Jehoiakim's actions and his words might have intimidated those who served him, but they do not intimidate God. The Lord pronounces judgment on the king, declaring that he would not have a successor to sit on the throne of David. Furthermore, Jeremiah told Jehoiakim that he would die and his corpse would be left unburied and exposed to the elements. Jeremiah 22 indicates that Jehoiakim's death would not be mourned and that his corpse would be treated like that of a donkey. In verse 27 through 29 in chapter 36 here, the evil deed of his burning the scroll is mentioned three times, and this emphasizes the wickedness of what he had done. This kind of wickedness demanded severe judgment. Jeremiah continued on his pronouncement against Jehoiakim, declaring that his descendants, his royal officers, the residents of Jerusalem, and all the people of Judah would suffer a disaster. Like Jehoiakim, they would experience the consequence of failing to listen to God's prophet. 
We can learn that people who go along with a godless leader or they fail to stand up for what's right will always still be held accountable by God and their unwillingness to act according to his word will incur judgment eventually. As we conclude today's study, there's a few things we can take away from it. The first is that believers are called to faithfully deliver God's word to others. Also, some will reject God's word and they will try to silence it or destroy it. And finally, believers should share with confidence, knowing that God's word is the ultimate truth. Thank you for joining me for today's session in the book of Jeremiah. I will see you in our next study.